Welcome to Crime Crazy, the weekly true crime podcast with Erin Plyme and Diana Seacon, where we prove that we know nothing about our legal system, but we're still crazy for a good true crime story. Do you know what else we're crazy about? Halloween. Ooh. Yeah, but the funny part is I don't like holidays and I don't like children but my favorite part of Halloween is watching all the kids in their costumes. I mean, I feel like you'd be inhuman if that wasn't your favorite part. Yeah, that's probably true. Although, Although I'm also fond of the chocolate part. Oh, the chocolate part. And I'm really, really getting into the decorating part. Yeah, you are. We're going to have such great pictures for everybody. Oh, I yes. I already do. I just can't post them because like, I don't want our friends to see until the party. Right. So... It's going to be great. Hooray. So we're crazy for Halloween, but we're also crazy for our sponsors. Yes. Crime Crazy is sponsored by Courtney Ellis, who I got to hug yesterday. Yay. David Hatt and Paul Schrader. Thanks, guys. And because it is the first episode we are recording this month, weirdly, yeah. <laughs> we have shout outs for all of our patrons. Woohoo! So a special thank you to Brian Williams, Eric Boscana, Jess Lee, Patty Snow, come on, Mouse, uh, Peg Pool, and Rebecca Manners. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. You're awesome. Yes, you are. If you would like to support Crime Crazy, we've got a couple different ways you can do that. You can join our Patreon or you can buy us a coffee. And links to both are on our website and new in our uh, descriptions on Instagram. Oh, nice. Good work. Yeah. Why, thank you. I had one good idea last week. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Oh, I also have a review shout out. Oh my goodness, what a great day. It is a great day. So we have a review shout out from Ireland. Awesome. It's one of Diana's favorite places. I think it is Diana's favorite place. Outside of like my own house. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, it was captioned, big love all the way from Ireland, from Kelly Belb. Big love all the way to Ireland. Thank you so much for your lovely review. Yes, it was very, very nice. It was. If you'd like to leave us a review, please do so on your favorite platform of choice. And also, don't forget, you can always email us at Diana at Crime Crazy and Erin at Crime Crazy. Um, to either tell us that you've left a review that we haven't found out about yet or to ask for stickers. Or to tell us about your favorite Halloween traditions or your neighbor that got murdered or whatever. So, well, unfortunately, I have a question for you. Oh, man. I'm running on like three hours of sleep, so I'm probably going to have a sassy answer for you. I expect nothing less. (laughs) <laughs> My question is, Diana, did you learn anything this week? I did. I mean, I learned a lot of things this week, but most of them were work-related, and that has limited appeal to most of our, although not all of our audience. I, true. But what I really learned is this. Aaron. Have you ever heard the old wives tale that the reason that it is physically impossible to open your eyes while you're sneezing is because the pressure of your sneeze would blow out your eyeballs? I I have heard that. I don't believe that, but I've heard it. I don't know that I believe it either, but unfortunately I did learn something that can happen when you hold in your sneezes. Oh no. So early last year, a gentleman who did not want to be sneezing when he needed to be sneezing pinched his nose and clamped his mouth to stop the sneeze. Oh, my. But he ruptured his throat instead. Oh, my God. Yeah. So it ruptured his pharynx, oh. which is right before the mouth. Yeah. Uh, He spent a week in the hospital, was on a feeding tube, gave him a bunch of antibiotics for a while, uh, is fine. Everything seems fine now. Um, But 
the people that wrote the article made it real clear that you should just never, ever try to hold in a sneeze. Just go ahead and, and do it. Yikes. Yeah. Okay. I promise. Yeah. No worries. Oh, my God. Also, you're you're an adorable sneezer. I am like a take cover sneezer. <laughs> well, but see, my <laughs> sneezes are like half held in, like not intentionally. Oh. They just never come out. They just stop somewhere in the back of my head. And then I just go and make a little sneeze noise because it's very cute. I feel There's like there face. needs to be an end to that sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> so your body is like repressing sneezes. I guess so. I don't think it's something that I'm doing. But yeah. Now you're going to like worry about sneezing I know. for a while, aren't you? <laughs> Every time my nose itches, I'm going to be like, oh my God, my throat's going to explode. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they did say it's probably not going to happen. Uh, usually when you hold back a sneeze, you can rupture your eardrums or like throw out your back. Oh, those are both awful choices, too. Better than your throat rupture. Truth. Yeah, that's true. I've thrown out my back and lived to tell the tale. Yeah. Like, if he hadn't gotten immediate medical attention, I don't know that he would have. Oh, my gosh. Do you think people have died that way? Not everybody has access to immediate medical attention. Well, and if they did die that way... Like, what did they think happened? Because they'd probably just drop. Yeah. You know, especially if they were at home or something. Although, why would you hold in the sneeze when you're at home? Like, Right, if you're just you're by home, yourself. Do what you want. Yeah. Right? Unless you're some for some reason in the habit. I, wow. My mom was having trouble with her ears popping for a while. Mm-hmm. And apparently my dad's sneezing would set it off. What? Okay. So, yeah. I think it was the pressure change. Like if he was right next to her. Oh, wow. That's a powerful sneeze. Yeah. Oh, he is also a like hold on to your pants sneezer. Um, <laughs> but he, so he got in the habit of when he felt a sneeze coming on saying sneeze and she'd plug her ears. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and it, it seems to have resolved. Like it went on for a few years and it seems to have resolved um i think like when she got her hearing aids oh yeah but now he's still <laughs> like now it's just her reflex sneeze <laughs> <laughs> just calls it out ahead of time yep absolutely announces it oh gosh that's really funny <laughs> my baby sister when she sneezes i mean i say baby she just turned 21 um when she sneezes she sneezes like 10 times in a row and they're like cartoon sneezes she'll go Chew, 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 chew in this little, and it's exactly <laughs> like that. It sounds fake, but her eyes water and like, it's a real sneeze. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So we make fun of her because that's how my family rolls. <laughs> well, yeah. I think it's funny how we all have like our own sneeze pattern. Yeah. Like some people are one sneezers and some people are two sneezers and Emily's like a 10 sneezer. Ten sneezer, and... <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Sneezes are weird. They are weird. But don't hold them in. Don't hold them in. Apparently that's real bad. Yeah. Well, now we know. Yeah. Thank God you learned that. You could have saved a life tonight, Diana. So do you know how I learned that? Uh, no. How did you learn that? <laughs> I was reading a listicle entitled something to the effect of 10 times sneezing got you in trouble with the law. <laughs> so it's like people that did a bunch of cocaine and sneezed at an inopportune time or Gosh. a woman that like claimed that she sneezed and hit the accelerator pedal and one guy that got like beaten because sneezing in public was just illegal in 1918 wherever he was how okay yeah but if you hold it in your ears and your throat are gonna pop open so like that's unfair well i think if i'm remembering right so it's like a week ago when I read this, he was like in front of a court or something. And uh, so like, I think a criminal <laughs> is where I'm gotcha. going. So I think he was like during some kind of crime process and sneezed. So I'm sure they did not care whether his throat ruptured because, you know, right. He was a criminal and sneezed in public. Just fucking kill. Him. Yeah. I mean, really? Yeah. 
So yeah, that is how I came across that. It was linked in that very odd article about sneezing and crime. That is the weirdest. The internet is a strange place. Do you want to know the craziest listicle I have ever heard of? Ooh, okay. Maybe. (laughs) It's kind of great. It was times that Tom Hanks has peed in a movie to move the plot along. Apparently it happens a lot. I mean, he talks about it in Forrest Gump. And there's the beginning of Green Mile. He has a UTI. Okay. Um, and uh, John Coffey cures him of it. That's kind of the first right. way they know he cures people. Um, apparently there was a pee scene in the movie that's not called Survivor, but it's kind of the same premise. Okay, sure. The one with the volleyball. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whose name you can't remember either. Um, tag on it. Until you said that, I had it. I was about to say it. Yeah. The volleyball was Wilson. Yeah. That I remember. I don't remember what the movie was named. But no, there were like quite a few of where Tom Hanks peeing was a plot device. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, um, I mine is not a weird listicle, my story for this week, but it is kind of a weird story. Awesome. I'm, Do tell. I'm pretty excited. So, Diana, you're a woman. Um, although... <laughs> I believe so. I Well, yeah, I mean, as far as I know. Um, I, I guess this does not have to be a female thing, but I feel like it's mostly a female thing. But when you walk to your car, do you or have you ever been advised to carry your keys a certain way or keep your headphones out of your ears or... Uh-huh. Um, Make sure that your phone is handy in case you need to call for help or always go with a buddy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All of those mm-hmm. things, right? Pepper spray, flashlight, small knives. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. 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 Because 100% every time you step out into the dark, you're about to be mugged. Or raped. Or raped. Or just flat out murdered. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. I have a vagina, therefore that is my destiny. Right. Well, and, and you, you know, it, yeah. It's just dangerous. It's lurking around every corner. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the topic for this week for Crime Cozy, the crime that I feel like people are really afraid might actually happen to them this week is mugging. You know, if I didn't know that we had planned this topic several weeks before you knew you were going to New York next week. I know. <laughs> Well, and it's sort of topical with, like, our city and everything else at the moment. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to scare myself I also out think of... of mugging. Nah, you'll be fine. I also think of mugging as, like, a New York thing. I think that's probably because as a kid, that's where I heard about it happening because I lived in suburban Minneapolis. Right, right. <laughs> and, and New York City is the big, bad, scary city. Well, in in the 80s, it was. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to tell you about New York, though. Okay. I'm going to tell you about Baltimore. Oh. (laughs) So I don't know if you know this, but in Baltimore, um, crime is kind of a a thing. I've heard it's, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's a situation. Um, But they're not like cool with that in Baltimore. So they are trying to put some measures in place to help solve this crime is a thing problem that they have going on. And Mm -hmm. one of those measures um, was to hire a new deputy police commissioner named Daniel Murphy. Okay. Okay. So Daniel Murphy was really successful in Louisiana. He had done some like crime reform there, pushed through some things. They saw a lot of really good success. He's very tenacious. So they decided they wanted to bring him up to Baltimore where he could transfer the skills that he had in, um, I think it was in New Orleans, to to Baltimore, right, and solve some of their issues. Mm -hmm. So April of this year, he came and immediately started pushing these reforms through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um... I shared a picture with you a couple weeks ago. You did. (laughs) Of a 12-year-old boy 
who looked really awkward. And also very much like a former coworker. And also apparently you guys used to work with an awkward 12-year-old boy. Um, that is Daniel Murphy. Okay. So he's not exactly the person that you envision when you think tough cop who's going to fix shit in Baltimore. Well, it, exactly. Like he looks like cop I might find around Roseville. Yeah. With the person that he's riding along with, because this is just training. Right, <laughs> right, because he's clearly 12. He is clearly 12. <laughs> um, but apparently he, he's very successful. Now, he is a civilian in this role, so he isn't actually a badge gun carrying police officer. Mm -hmm. All right, so arrived in April, he's going to set everything straight. So let me give you a little idea of what he has to work with. Just this year, 2019, there have already been, and I researched this two weeks ago, so it may have changed, 195 homicides in the city of Baltimore, 166 Damn. of which were shootings. So they have a but Aaron, gun problem. Guns aren't a problem. Uh, yes. Yes, they are, Diana. I don't know who told you that. Guns don't kill people. People will kill people. I saw the best meme about that the other day. Because then it went Ooh. on to say, if one of your children is hitting another child with a stick, it's not the stick that did the hitting. It's the child. But you're still going to take the stick away. Yeah. So Anyway. All right, so Daniel comes in to this city where there have been 200 people killed, and it is only October. Um, and he doesn't have a gun or a badge, and he looks like a 12-year-old. Um, but the reason that it's significant that he doesn't have a gun or a badge is, and that he looks like a 12-year-old is if you saw him on a street, you wouldn't necessarily know he had anything to do with law enforcement. Right. But I'll post his photo on some of our social media. So July 19th, so he's been in Baltimore for a few months. He and his wife are outside at after dark near Patterson Park. They're walking. I think maybe they had gone to see a movie. I can't remember why they were outside. But anyway, they're walking mm -hmm. on the sidewalk and a white SUV pulls up next to them. And two young men hop out. One of them came around behind Mrs. Murphy um, and like uh, ordered her to give him the her purse and mm -hmm. then took that one back, took the purse back to the car while the other guy got out and um, demanded the rest of their valuables. So they had a gun. And so the Murphys handed over everything, um, which I found like it was an interesting list. So it was a purse and a wallet and some cash that apparently mm -hmm. was not in the wallet. And then at least two, but it sounded like probably three cell phones for two people um yeah he, he probably has a work works phone. for the government yeah well he works for the government he doesn't they probably don't want him using his phone. yeah no it's true um so the men got back in the car and they drove away and no one was hurt okay all right so Daniel and his wife described the kids as about 18. And one of the things that I noticed is that none of the articles mentioned anything about a physical description, particularly race. Because Ooh. as you can see in the picture, Daniel is a skinny little white kid. Um, and I don't actually, did I look at pictures of these guys? I'm fairly certain the kids, they catch the kids and I'm fairly certain that they are black. But I think that it was an intentional choice not to say mm -hmm. that in the article and like make this at all about race, right? It was about kids who mm -hmm. committed a crime. It didn't really matter. Plus they were able to ID them very quickly. So, so did they know it was him or was it just people on the street that look like they have a wallet? Um, so I think, I think it's the latter and it, they didn't specifically address it. And of course this is still relatively recently, like some charges have been filed and all of that by now. Um, but I didn't see anything where it said what, you know, what all, like mm -hmm. they didn't confess or anything like that. Um, but when I tell you the rest of the story, I'm pretty convinced it was just opportunity. Mm -hmm. So, and you wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't look at him and think cop. Well, no, but if she was walking down the street with a purse and they were relatively alone, yeah. it's a, you know, opportunity. Well, right. And I don't know what she looks like, but I'm going to guess she also does not look intimidating. And so it was a pretty good opportunity. Um, and they managed to get exactly what they want and leave with no 
incident. However, Mm -hmm. they weren't very smart. Um, (laughs) They immediately took the credit cards and went on a shopping spree. And so police were able to track the group by following credit card purchases as they went down the road. And they then went into the stores and they pulled video footage and they identified the kids that were using the cards. So several hours after the mugging, police received another call. So this time an Uber driver had been carjacked. He was parked and four young men approached his car with a gun. One of them ordered him to get out of his Camry. Super sweet ride. And then hit him in the side of the face (laughs) with the gun and drove away in the car. So hold on. As a longtime Toyota owner, Toyotas and Hondas are the most stolen cars. In like the Camry Corolla uh, and the Honda, like Accord, mm-hmm. they're the top. Well, they're pretty like reliable, generic, popular. Well, and they can be parted out really easily because yeah. there's a bunch of them. Yeah. It just makes sense. So yeah, no. A Camry is a great find. If it's you're true. That's true. That's true. Um, so yeah, pistol whipped him, drove away. So the next day... There were police in a helicopter, and they were able to locate the car. And so the helicopter followed the car by air until it watched two people get out, like the car stopped and two guys got out. Um, And they took video and then arrested the two guys. And the two guys they arrested, I'm going to say this name wrong because neither of these names make sense in my head. So Kamal Godwin, I've got that. That's easy. The other one is Kari I thought it was Carrie and it was going to be a female. It is K-A-H-R-E-E. But I don't think that's... K-A-H-R-E-E. Right. So I'm going to say it's probably Kari. Yeah. Um, Seems like the most logical explanation. Yeah. And the last name is not Folks and it's not Fowls. It's Falks. Anyway, they had video. It's awkward to pronounce. It is. It's really hard. The whole name is hard to say. Yeah. They arrested Falks and Godwin. Both of them turned out to be 16 years old. And they oh. had been on a spree. So before and after the mugging, they had committed several crimes. So on July 18th, they stole the car that they were in when they mugged Daniel and his wife. They um, have since been charged with armed carjacking for the Uber driver. Also, mm-hmm. Godwin was charged with armed robbery and assault during an incident that took place the day before the mugging. So before and after, just all over the place with this crime spree. Wow. And Kari was wearing a GPS monitoring anklet during the mugging. Damn. Which means it's really unlikely they're going to be able to argue it wasn't them. Well, but also, like, are those things just not monitored? So the way that this one works, um, we don't know why he had the anklet. The only thing that they would release to, like, the press is that um, they're given to people who are leaving a secure residential treatment facility on probation. Um, They're given to juveniles leaving a secure residential treatment facility on probation. There are 330 juveniles who are in that position in and around Baltimore who have recently left this facility on probation. However, only 25 of them seemed to need an anklet of which Kari was one of them. Um, And the way that they talked about them working is you're given certain places you can go during certain times, maybe. And if you leave that area, you might get a text or it'll alert somebody and they'll call you. And so it's tracked, but it's not like it's going to zap you or start alarming or something like that. Well, I thought that if they had moved outside their designated area that perhaps the cops would come after them because if all it's going to do is text or call you, that's super easy to avoid. Yeah. Well, I mean, and it alerts your probation officer as well. And so I think that the text or the call or whatever is a warning, like you need to go back. I don't know if you know this, but you're not where you're supposed to be. And then presumably, you know, if you continue to do it, eventually someone will, but that doesn't like leaving your designated area doesn't make you a high priority for police to rush out to right it i feel like as a 16 year old if you are one of 
what's that about seven percent of people that have been released from this facility that need to be ankled yeah that it should maybe be a tiny priority um yes but i think that it's more like you know i'm the probation officer this person's only allowed to be in this area that's the condition of their probation if we have our weekly meeting and they've left their area 15 times and gotten texts and ignored them every time like i'm gonna do something about it but it's not necessarily worth me getting up and doing something between meetings right so it's more like let me track how many times you broke the rules so that when Mm -hmm. it comes time to account for that i've got some evidence our system is amazing. Yeah. But, I mean, he he wasn't, at least until this point, as far as we know, like a violent criminal. He... Well, but he's a juvenile. Yeah. And he's got an ankle bracelet. So yeah. I'm going to go ahead and assume he was violent. Um, possibly. But I think this was, like, drugs. Well, but they, they come with violence sometimes. They do. It's That's very true. Um, so... They've got these two in custody. Uh, They did charge them as adults. However, they weren't the two that got out of the car and robbed or robbed or rubbed um, Daniel and his (laughs) wife. I don't think anyone rubbed them, but, you know, um, they actually were the two that stayed in the car. And the other two guys were the ones who got out and brought the valuables back to the car to Kari and um, Kamal. Hmm. So what a weird division of responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know if there was some sort of hierarchy there and these guys were like the big shots or if it that was just, you know, the breakdown. Because then, of course, right after that, um, Kari did go and rob a car and, or rob a, an Uber driver and whack him in the head and right. all that good stuff. So, um Anyway, so yeah, the the reason that this is in the media, because it's not, it's not that much of a story, right? Like, yeah. some kids did some stupid shit, including stealing some cars, and one guy got a black eye. Like, that is unfortunately not big news, because there is so much bigger news. But, mm. of course, it's, you know, all over the media, because... They bring in an expert to help stop crime in the city. He walks outside and immediately is a victim of the crime that he is supposed to be stopping, which is really unfortunate. But I did think that he handled it very well. In all of his interviews, he was like, yeah, that was terrifying. It was really upsetting. I have a lot of work to do here, but this isn't going to discourage me from getting that work done. So, yeah. Good for him. So that's my story. Um, Awesome. I, well... You know, if, what is he called again? The deputy police commissioner of Baltimore can't Mm. safely walk down the street with another person without getting mugged. Diana, do I stand any chance whatsoever in New York next week? Oh, yeah, you'll be fine. Okay. So according to the Oxford English Dictionary, which is the only real dictionary of the English language... (laughs) love that you have a strong opinion about dictionaries of course you do (laughs) obviously i do (laughs) Uh, mugging is an act of attacking and robbing someone in a public place okay and according to ell.com that's english language learner which is actually a really great site the general connotation of a mugging is that the person getting mugged is harmed in some physical way or at least threatened with injury Mm mm-hmm But the main thing to note here is that mugging isn't actually a distinct category of crime. Mm -hmm. So statistics about mugging were hard to come by because mugging is really just a variety of robbery. Right. So according to Wikipedia, robbery is the crime of taking or attempting to take anything of value by force, threat of force, or putting the victim in fear. According to common law, robbery is defined as taking the property of another with the intent to permanently deprive the person of that property by means of force or fear. So that is it, a larceny or theft accompanied by assault. If I plan to give it back, it doesn't count? No, because you're not permanently depriving, so it would be like trespassing and assault. Hmm. Yeah. That seems like a loophole. Yeah, probably. 
But do you really ever take something and intend to give it back? Or is that just the story you tell them when they find out that you've taken it? Well, back? exactly. So then hopefully <laughs> nobody would ever buy that. Right. So overall, crime has gone way, way, way down. Yay. Uh, according to PewResearch.org, uh, using the FBI numbers, violent crime fell 49% between 1993 and 2017. Using the BJS data, which is the Bureau of Justice Statistics, mm, that's the not rate what fell. BJS stands for. Aaron. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Using their data, the rate fell 74% during that span. And for both studies, 2017 is the most recent year of data. Right. There are obviously large geographic variations, and there were slight upticks between 2004 and 2006, and again between 2014 and 2016. But overall, no matter what anybody tries to tell you, the U.S. is a much safer place than it was when we were kids. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So according to the FBI's Uniform Crime Reporting, there were an estimated 282,061 robberies in 2018. That has decreased uh, by 12% from the 2017 estimate and decreased 12.6% from the 2014 estimate. Um, 2018 numbers were down 31% from 2009. Oh, that's all excellent news. Yeah, estimated robbery rate is 86.2 per 100,000 inhabitants, and that's a decrease of 12.6% uh, between 2018 and 2017. Um, in 2018, average dollar value of property stolen was $2,119. Mm. Um, but residences experienced the highest average dollar loss at 4600 per offense. I, it wouldn't be very hard to break into many houses and grab that much stuff in a small bag. I mean, if you think about an iPhone is a thousand bucks. Well, and that's, I, I'm looking at my desk, which has more than that on it. Right, right. And it's not. And it's all portable. I mean, that would be, I'm assuming that all of those amounts are like the value at like their their value when you buy them, right? Because you're not going to resell right. my Pixel for fourteen hundred dollars, and I didn't buy it for fourteen hundred. But that is how much the price tag says it is. Well, right, but you could take my iPhone ten and sell it for six hundred dollars. Yeah, and my MacBook and sell it for. I mean, I bought it for seven hundred dollars a year ago, and I got a hell of a deal because I bought it from our friend. Right. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, you know, if you could it wouldn't, get into it yeah. and not get caught and not get tracked. Right. And right. Not that we're advising exactly. you do this. No. And that's all really hard, especially with Max. I mean, I suppose if you're going to go to the trouble of stealing it, you know how to get into them, but hopefully, yeah. Or you're just yeah. dumb. Yeah. Or know some dumb Maybe. people who will buy it. Yeah. It's probably better. Among the robberies for which the UCR program received weapons information in 2018, strong arm tactics were used in 43%, mm. firearms in 38.2%, knives or cutting estimate instruments, not estimates, in 8.3%, and other dangerous weapons were used in 10.4% of robberies. But they did not specify what, and I would like to know. I mean, I guess it's like whatever they had in their hand, like a stick or a, right. you know, crowbar. or Yeah. Big bag. Yeah. <laughs> bag with a lead brick in it. Right. What I've told, <laughs> asked my mom for years if that's what she carries. <sighs> mom purses, man. I, mine gets that way, too. It's usually pens. That's why I just have the wallet, because it's just garbage. <laughs> so overall, um, you're not terribly likely to be robbed. Mm -hmm. um, you're less likely to be robbed violently. You're less likely to be robbed personally. You are much more likely to have your home robbed or your car robbed or, right. you know, have your bike taken off of wherever it's chained or whatever it is. Well, I'm not bringing my um, home car or bike to New York, so. No, so you should be fine. Okay. Um, also, New York is pretty safe. Like, I didn't, 
depending on where you are. Right. Right. But I know where you're going and it's, it's real nice. (laughs) (laughs) So you are not terribly likely to be a victim of a personal robbery. Good. Um, in 2017, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot my transition. There are ways that you can help prevent it. Um, even if somebody is looking out for some kind of opportunity like they did with your guy, mm-hmm. there are some things you can do to make that opportunity less appealing. Oh, okay. So in 2017, a journalist from the Today Show sat down with a man who'd been sentenced to 25 years to life for robbery. And he estimates that he has mugged more than 100 people. Oh, Wow. So he, here are his tips for not being his next victim. I'm ready. So number one, I did not realize this was a trick. A mugger is going to ask you or might ask you for the time to get you to slow down. Oh, yeah. Or directions or some, something. Get your attention. I, I had no idea. I wonder if all of the times I've taken pride in in foreign cities when somebody's asked me for directions, if they would have fucking robbed me. Uh, maybe <laughs> but it because i'm always sense. like i look so confident it seems like i know what i'm doing yeah and they're really like and I'm always all- that's a tourist see if you can get her to stop so we can steal her shit well and also not only is she, she's first she's alone yeah yeah so yeah um so his first word of advice was keep walking yeah um if somebody asks you the time or directions whatever he's trying to get you to stop or slow down um, so if you want to be a helpful person, if you're a nice Midwesterner who can't just walk away from people that look like they need help, right. Uh, go for a distance and keep walking at your same pace. Don't break your stride. Don't stop. Right. I can look at my watch and walk. Right. Um, make noise. So this guy says that the person that will give you the least resistance is the most appealing target. Um, so he said it doesn't necessarily mean women. This particular guy said, in my experience, women scream, so I sort of preferred men. (laughs) (laughs) That's fair. Yeah. A man is going to scream for help. Right. But he also said noise-making devices. Have a whistle, an air horn, anything that makes noise if uh, you're not the screaming type. Okay. So my Um, four-year-old. Right. Okay. Mace or pepper spray. Yeah. Keep it in your hand so it's visible. Yeah never fight no never fight um even if you're a good fighter because you've just escalated yeah and then be careful of where you are so be careful in your driveway um this assumes that you have a normal house with a i don't even want to say normal he's assuming that you have a house with an attached garage Mm -hmm. uh because he's saying, all you have is the garage in front of you and two houses on the side of you. And I'm like, no, I have a busy street and not my house. Yeah. <laughs> um, but be careful in your driveway, um, where you are. Try not to be alone in places. He said, if you live in a place with a subway, stand in the middle of the subway platform around people. Yeah. So even if you don't want to be around people or even if you don't know people, crowds will deter people. And if you seem like you're you're with them or you're close to people, they're not going to bother. Right. Yep. That is all like really easy, positive, good advice that I feel like most people could do. I think so. And I think it's realistic, you know, because a lot of times some of these articles will say things like, go take a Krav Maga class and learn how to throat punch him and, right. you know, do all those things. Like I'm a fat 44 year old broad. Yeah. If I can't sit on you to subdue you, I'm out. Right. <laughs> but I can scream and but stand I near other people. scream and look confident and not talk to you. Yeah. Actually, I feel like screaming, looking confident and not talking to me. Those are things that you probably excel at. I'm, I am really good at all of them. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. So just a few things. Um, pretty easy, achievable, I think, for all of us. Yeah. Just be careful. Cool. Cool. That makes yeah. me feel better. This was a much better episode than last week where you told me yeah. we were totally all going to get stalked and murdered in our homes. Yeah. Last week was a super bummer. Yeah. And I think the biggest bummer, because I've actually been thinking about that one, because it was a super bummer. I think the biggest bummer is that 
there's really no prevention. Right. But you did have you lots know, of good resources. Well, right. Because that's really all you can do. Yeah. Like, you know, again, like we said last week, the best prevention is not to hang out with people who might stalk you, but you don't always know who those people are. Well, presumably you don't know who those people are or you wouldn't be hanging out with them. Well, well, that's it. But sometimes you meet somebody and they seem fine or maybe they're the, you know, spouse or friend of somebody you like and, yeah. you know, like you just can't avoid all the people all the time. Yeah. But with something like this, there are at least things that can lessen your chances of being victimized. Right. Right. To even get you into that situation. Yep. I actually liked that he called out specifically that he didn't necessarily target women because he did say that. You know, they want to go the path of least resistance. So often they'll prey on like elderly people or people that seem like they're not getting around terribly well. Yeah. Um, but the thing was like, not necessarily women because they scream. Yeah. And it was kind of the first time or, you know, very limited times that I wasn't reading about a crime where he's like, absolutely went for the women, easier to take them down. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's nice. It's about time yeah. men are the victims. <laughs> exactly. <sighs> feel our pain that's right oh my god do you want to hear how cute my feminist son is i do so we've been watching the office because we're done with parks and rec <laughs> of course and i forgot how awful some of the characters are yes like sexist racist horrible and yes. i know that's part of the point and they're pointing at like yes. all that but like we were watching a little bit tonight and i was getting really pissed off about things but there was one scene i don't remember what they were doing but i turned to liam and i said that is not how you treat a woman yeah like if you ever <laughs> you <know>? right <laughs> and um then there was a scene later in the show where Roy, who is Pam's original boyfriend, uh, knows that he's mad at her and he's like trying to tickle her out of the bad mood. And she keeps saying, like, stop, I don't like I don't like this and, and all these yeah. things. And he keeps going until finally she just laughs and goes along with it. Um, So I'm looking at this like just angry. Yeah. Because a I hate being tickled. I used to be tickled against my will. It made me crazy. Yeah. Um, But also like. I'd forgotten how awful this character was. Do I want my kid to keep watching this show? <laughs> like no. I'm having all these thoughts. And then Liam turns to me and says, let me guess. That's not a way to treat a woman. Yup. That's right, buddy. Good boy. Catching on. Yeah. Good boy. Awesome. Yep. He picked up on a racist thing that I didn't even pick up on. <laughs> He's like, that was super racist. And I was like, oh, oh yeah, it totally was. <laughs> <sighs> Good Liam. Yeah, he's pretty great. Do you have any other advice for us tonight, Diana? Yeah. Um, don't watch the first six episodes of The Office. They're very infuriating. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> don't hold in the sneezes. No. Um, and if you get pepper spray, like, don't spray it to see if you'll sneeze and then try to hold it in. Just all bad. It's going to add in tears. End in tears. Yeah. I, okay, I promise. Yeah. So just don't. Don't hold in your sneezes. Like, examine your sneezing habits. Make sure you're not going to rupture anything. Yeah. 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 And then call your people. Call your people. Warn them not to hold in sneezes. Yeah, tell everyone. Tell them to make lots of noise in public. I mean, reasonably, and stick near crowds. <laughs> yeah. And uh, keep walking. Yeah, don't stop. You... And I think it's especially helpful for women. Like, just because somebody asks you a question doesn't mean you have to answer. No. Yeah, you're and not not think... obligated. Yeah, and now that I think back, like, I did not know that. That, like, the time and directions and that kind of stuff was a targeting thing. Mm -hmm. Now I look back and think... I wonder how many of those people were just gauging to see if they could rob me. Mm -hmm. and well, and we're now I feel like adult. <laughs> well, but we're very much like conditioned to that. It's rude to ignore someone and walk away from them when they're talking to you, especially if they need help and you should help them if you're a good person. And so I think that's excellent advice. 
Well, and also, uh, like, this generally happens in foreign countries, and I'm always keenly aware that I am an American, and they probably don't like me. <laughs> Which is also fair. A hundred percent fair. Um, but something that I'm always really aware of, I try not to act like an American, or act like they expect an American to act. Right. So, so call your people, don't answer questions. And don't end up on next week's episode.